All righty. Well, good evening, everybody. Oh, my goodness. Oh. So you know how I am. When I have something really super duper exciting to, I usually jump on. Um, besides my Instagram 60 second message motivator um, every day at uh, in the morning. I'm not going to say a time now because that used to be first thing in the morning. But um, it's whenever I get a chance to do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but welcome everybody. Hey, how are you? Um, so I am super excited to really kind of introduce and reintroduce everyone to uh, Royal Media and Publishing. Royal Media and Publishing hasn't been, uh, is the, what I call the uh, latest uh, publishing company. And I'll just kind of explain exactly why that is. So um, BK Royston Publishing is my first publishing company. It is 10 years old, and it is what I call the faith-based, family-friendly, uh, rated uh, PG version. And um, it's not necessarily to say that the books that are on Royal Media are rated R or rated X. They're not. It's just a totally different brand. And um, if you know anything about branding, you will know that um, sometimes you have to separate brands and you have to have two brands for multiple genres of books and i was getting people who were contacting me about um do you publish anything besides christian fiction or and i'm like well no not right now but i don't like using that no word unless it's um something that just really is out of my scope of influence so uh, in the meantime though um, I said, you know, I, I keep getting more and more people who are asking me about publishing varied genres. And I've been a librarian for 30 years. So, you know, genres of books and all kinds of genres of books are really just something that I enjoy reading. And there are different audiences for different books. Always keep that in mind that as an author, just as a hint, as an author, your book may not, you know, oh, I want the world to read it, but everyone is not going to want to read your book. It's just like being a des clothing designer. Everybody's not going to like your clothes. There's going to be some people who are going to fall in love with your clothes, and that's the only brand they buy. But then there are going to be others who will never try them on because they don't like them. It's, they don't have anything to do with the color. It's just your style and the way you design. So the same is with having a different genre of book. It, it just means that it's something else. It's another type. So whether it's sci-fi or whether it's a, uh, uh, a thriller, I can't really read murder mysteries too much anymore because <laughs> I'll have nightmares. But that's not saying that murder mysteries is not the favorite for somebody else because they like to be scared. Me, I like to sleep with a, the happy and they live happily ever after. Everybody doesn't like it. <laughs> so, um, so that's one of the primary reasons for Royal Media and Publishing. And that website is Royal Media and Publishing. And I'll put that in the comments. And you can go to that website and see the books that are there. There are sci-fi there. Clarence X. Johnson is the first sci-fi thriller. Yay! And I'm going to introduce y'all to him tonight. He's going to tell you about his book and show you his book and tell you how, um, how that came to be and writing and all that good stuff. So I really am I'm introducing you to Royal Media and Publishing, um, the latest genre. Now, everybody's not into sci-fi. Now, my husband, Brian, he is a sci-fi person. He's like the blue people, horns coming out the back of the neck. Star, well, I love Star Wars, but Star Wars, <laughs> I mean, all those sci-fi, like, ooh, he breathes fire. What? He's got, a, he's got long, I mean, you know, just all that whole science fiction, uh, fantasy um, genre, he's all into it. He's, he's just a geek. That's just it, bottom line. And um, so therefore, you know, he's like, oh, yeah, sci-fi. Um, yeah, that's great. That's great. So, um, so what I want to make sure, and I'll put in the comments. Uh, Okay, that's the website, just in case you're um, definitely interested and you say, oh, I didn't know she published other stuff. 
So there's my Royal Media and Publishing site. And then we're going to put in the link for um, Clarence's book so you can be sure and uh, reach out and get his, I'll pin this comment. So, and then we'll pin um, um, Clarence's site too as well, um, where to purchase his book. Okay. So Clarence, do me a favor. Yes, ma'am. Put up the um, cover of your book. Let's see the front of it. Trying to make sure. Ooh, okay, bring it back just a little so they can see the bottom. Yeah, oh, there it is. Draconian <laughs> Saga, Dragon of Darkness, Spike. And that, if that doesn't tell you sci-fi, <laughs> science fiction, another world, something over the top, <laughs> I don't know what does, but this is what I want you to tell the people first. And thank you so much for those of you who are joining us. Please share the video. Share because you care. You can put a hashtag shared in the comments, and I would greatly appreciate it. So I want you to introduce um, everybody, who you are, and uh, what you do, and really kind of how you got started with sci-fi. Go. Okay, well, um, first off, my name is Clarence Johnson. I'm 22 years old. I am a uh, military child. I've been all over the United States and it has been an adventure. And um, one of the things I've loved doing since I was a kid was writing, but I never had a, um, I never had a focus point. I would just write all over the place. And when I got into high school, I was still doing it, but I would go further along with it. And then in 2013, I started this book. And out of all the ones I had started, this is the one that I wanted to go far with it. So I decided, okay, if I'm going to do this, I really have to put my all into it. So I sat down, I redid the entire old version because the old version was um, a mess compared to what I have now. Cause you know, just you go through so many rough drafts and um, it was a long process. Um, it was hard because sometimes you think, okay, well, can I really do this? Am I really able to do this? Like, Maybe I shouldn't do this. Maybe I should focus on a different career or go to school or do something more with my life than just write this book. But I kept going. I kept going. I had different people in my life telling me, hey, keep going. I want to see where this goes. And they really helped me to get to this point. And when I finally got here, I realized it was, it was worth it because people who've read my book have enjoyed it and said, wow, your book is amazing. I love the characters. I love how... You do different things in the book. I love the, the development. I love everything about it. And I'm like, thank you, because it means a lot to me. Because at one point, Keep going. I, didn't, I didn't like it. I didn't like anything about the book. But now when I look at it, when I look at the book, and I can see myself, and I say, you know, wow, I did this. With the help of other people, I made this possible. Well, congratulations, first off. First, thank you. first off, congratulations for sticking to it. And um, so, so and that's first. And then second, thank you for your service, because I know that you like, I'm not active in the military, but you are. When your family's in the military, you're in the military, okay? <laughs> so um, thank you for your service and the part that you played. Um, just being, moving around all over the world, literally. Have you moved, or just in the U.S.? Have just you, in the U.S., but I'm hopefully trying to go to Germany. Oh, okay. So, I mean, I haven't been to Germany either. I really, I've been like in the outskirts, but anyway, I digress. So, um, thank you so much for all of those of you who have joined us. First off, uh, I am over the top excited that we have a young brother on here writing. Now, that is, so I just want to know, what do people say? Not, not the older people who are like, go baby, go. But what about your friends? What do they say when you say, I've written a book and published a book? Well, they're usually like, wow, you, you really did this. You know, I was there when you started it, but I didn't really think you were going to get through it. And one of my closest friends or some of my closest friends who've uh, been there since the beginning, they kept me going, kept me going. He's just like, CJ, you made it. You did it. Oh, uh, okay. Good, good, good. I'm glad. So you didn't have the, you're a nerd, blah, blah, you know. The, no. <laughs> okay, good. You had the right circle of friends then. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully. <laughs> Thankfully, I know. And if, if you didn't have the right circle of friends, I would say, dump them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so tell us a little bit, even before we get into what the story is about, tell us a little bit about your writing process. Because 
I know I write fiction and write romance fiction and I might dabble maybe uh, in the future in some other fiction, but I can truthfully say it is a lot longer process writing fiction than it is nonfiction. Do you mm -hmm. agree? Yes, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. And what was the biggest part for you? Was it the characters? What is it getting the setting? Was it the dialogue? What? For me, it was, it was just starting out because I didn't know where I wanted to go. Because when I first started, I thought, okay, well, people have done this, this, and this, so I have to do it like them. Right. One day, my dad was like, you realize this is, this is your book. This, you can do literally anything you want. You can create anything you want. And that opened my mind to possibilities, but I was, I was still stuck. I was like, what do I, how do I want to start this? And then someone had said to me, why don't you do it like the Bible did? Start at the end and work your way back. Wow. So I, I started with the end of the book and worked my way all the way back to the beginning. And Okay, was, so I want, I want to go back to your dad's comment mm -hmm. that this is your book and the author of it. And I think that's one of the critical things that authors keep forgetting. Their name is on the front. And even if I'm helping you to write it and coach you in the writing process, I still want to, you have questions, I want to help you, but I also feel like it's a partnership, that it's, it's something that we go together in it, you know what I mean? Because in the end of the day, it's still yours, how you want to tell the story. And you need to make sure that it's clear, but still being able to tell that story is just really criti critical. Do you agree? Uh, yes, wholeheartedly. Oh, wow. So I guess that's the reason why it took, took a little bit longer. So yes. <laughs> when did you come up with the, the plot and the story first or the characters? I came up with the plot and the story first. Okay. Characters and then, okay. later. And then do, uh, okay, so I have to ask you this. Do your characters talk to you? <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know. I know you don't want to admit it, but you can <laughs> tell me. You don't tell nobody else. Yeah, they <laughs> you do. tell me it is a <laughs> literal I mean those of you who write fiction if you write fiction if you've ever wanted to write fiction the characters literally talk to you they communicate with you you're inspired you you hear voices I'm sorry yeah. <laughs> you, you do you hear from me but you know that's how it works <laughs> that's how it works I mean you know and and believe you me if you try to let life go on and you kind of ignore them, they will start talking to you like, hello, come back to me. I've got a book right now. Hello. You left me somewhere. I need you to come me. <laughs> that is the exact truth. I mean, it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. So now I want you, you can't do any giveaways. I mean, you know, we're not going to give away the, the actual story itself. We're just going to give a little teaser. So tell the people, given what the cover looks like, <laughs> given what they put the cover back up there again, Clarence. One more time. Okay, so given what the cover looks like, we got fire. We got woo. So got tell dragons, us about. Tell us about in the background. Yeah. Woo! Oh, okay. To give you a little teaser, the fallen king, who was dethroned by his brothers and sisters, raised a half dragon and half human being that is the main character called Draconis. And he molds Draconis to be a weapon. He strips away everything else that he ever would have or ever has. Family, friends, even a simple childhood taken all away from him. And he molds him into this, this weapon so he can get back everything that he lost. And throughout the book, you get to, you get to see Draconis go throughout the, the world, meeting different people. He learns to be more than what he is but it's not an easy road <laughs> okay okay so to me it sounds like a cross between joseph in the bible who was um betrayed by his brothers and samson who was a weapon by himself could just take a, a jawbone of a donkey and kill people and you know push the thing uh, you know the um so it's a kind of a cross between a uh, betrayal of family and then um, Samson. Now, I have to ask you this question, and mm. I know that um, you are a Christian, and so yes. I have to I have to ask this question: What mm. do you say to you know you you know the dragon is not a 
a nice character in the Bible. It's a yeah, symbol of, of, uh, of evil and, and Satan and the devil or the enemy. And mm -hmm. then, um, and then of course, you know, you are a Christian writing sci-fi. I'm not really trying to force you into defending it because there are people who totally understand it, but um, we're not. Um, so, so really tell us for a Christian mother who has a teenage son or a Christian father who has a teenage daughter who really likes the, the fantasy world, um, what, I mean, how would you approach that? You know, to say, you know, it's not, it's all about, you know, it's not going to deter them. It's not turning them into mm -hmm. anything except a, a lover of God and a follower of Christ. Go ahead. Well, I've actually gotten that question a lot. Like, if you're a Christian, how could you write about this? But I always tell them that, well, this is it's a strictly fantasy fiction. It has no place in the real world. It does not, or will not affect how you view or how you walk in your faith. Because at the end of the day, it's just fiction. Now, what I have gotten is, okay, so how does that work? Well, it's just like if you read any other book. If you read a romance novel, it's not going to influence your relationship. If you read a horror novel, it's not going to influence like the way you see things. At the end of the day, it's a novel. It's meant to be enjoyed, to you know, be liked, and just to have something that can, you know, when you want to get away from, you know, everyday struggles or lives, you can just pick up the book and say, okay, you know, I'll just read this today. And of course, you know, it's, it's that, it's that um, constant battle between good and evil. Let's just be honest. I mean, it, it's forever that, that battle between good and evil. I mean, yes. that's just it, bottom line. And honestly, we live that every single solitary day. Every yes. single solitary day, there are decisions that have to be made. There are decisions that have to be um, um, uh, made by each and every one of us every single solitary day. And believe yes. you me, God's love is more powerful than anything in the world. I believe that. I stand Amen. on that. Um, but having the creativity to be able to um, bring that out, I say congratulations. Um, right. Even the names of the characters and even the places and what they do and it really takes your imagination and creativity to the next level so yeah. what's next what's next in the book what's uh is this is a a saga right so there is a book two yes oh of course the book two is almost um halfway finished the um would it be all right for me to give the title sure, let's give a teaser <laughs> yes. so the the um title of book two is called draconian saga Broken Night. So, and um, I won't spoil the first book, but things in the second book happen to um, some of the individuals. And I'm, you won't know who it happens to. You, you might have an idea, but then it's, it's not going to go the way you think it's going to go. You might say, okay, he's going he's gonna to go this route. No, I'm not. I won't. <laughs> It'd be too easy if I if you could understand. Oh yeah, yeah, no, we're not gonna make it easy on anybody. No. So <laughs> basically, what I really want to uh, encourage you to do is to really think outside the box. Hello, Michael Young. He is also on uh, Royal Me, signed with Royal Media and Publishing, and he's joining us. Thank you. This is uh, Clarence Johnson, and mm -hmm. um, he has written sci-fi. As a matter of fact. There was a gentleman, if Michael remembers, there was a gentleman who was specifically looking for science fiction. We were at Jefferson Mall in June, so I was like, no, not yet. Uh. <laughs> and, uh, but um, I'm like, oh, he will be here the next one, I promise. His book will be here the next one, he'll be here the next one. So um, <laughs> there are, there is an audience for science fiction, for fantasy. You know, imagining another world and discovering another world. Um, Michael Young writes urban fiction, which really, uh, from the perspective of definitely, he tells the um, women, strong black woman story. So, you know, so it, it's, it's involving your creative juices, just taking your creativity to the next level. And I believe you me, there are some people who read science fiction who wouldn't read anything else <laughs> and who enjoy uh, reading science fiction and the fantasy and taking it to the next level. So, okay, I need the link um, for order for getting your book. 
Okay, um, I can type it in. Go ahead and type it in the comments, bit.ly forward slash. And go ahead and type that in. And um, Clarence's book is available on Amazon and barnesandnoble.com, Kindle and Nook. And uh, so I just encourage you, if you like that genre, if you know someone who likes that genre, go ahead and share this video to your uh, group. Um, and then uh, thank you. Uh, Joey Price says congratulations to you on your book. Yay. Thank you, Joey. <laughs> Sounds like a great read. Hey, Miss Annette, how are you doing, dear? And so, you know, I, I really appreciated that. Books are kind of my world right now and um, look like they're going to be for a long time in the future. <laughs> so um, I'm really, really over the top excited about um, the different genres and because people have a variety of books that they enjoy to read. And so um, fortunately for me, BK Horston Publishing and Royal Media and Publishing offer that variety uh, of books. Now, if you're interested in writing, reach out to me. And if you have a book already written that you've been hiding in notebooks, reach out to me. That's um, bit.ly, talk with Royston. And let's talk about your book. Just talk with Royston, get on my calendar, and let's talk about your book. Now, our next stops is the African Heritage um, Festival, which is August 25th. Um, Clarence will be there with his book. If you're in the Louisville area, we're going to be at the Crescent Park, which is right across from the Louisville Zoo there at Trevelyan Way, the African Heritage it's Family Reunion um, this year. And so um, be sure and, and stop by. We'll be there from 10 to 7 on uh, August 25th. We'll also be, the next stop after that is September 14th through the 16th. We'll be at Gaslight Festival. Uh, congratulations. Ms. Jacqueline Kelly says, nice work, young man. We need more of you. Yay! You. <laughs> um, so um, I'm really proud of that. Um, Jacqueline is in um, the Dallas Texas, um, near the Fort Worth area. I was just there with her this past week. So um, that, thank you so much for being there. So we will be joining us tonight, but we will be at the um, African Heritage Festival August 25th mm -hmm. at the Creason Park right there uh, across from the Louisville Zoo. We'll also be September 14th through the 16th. We will be at Gaslight Festival, which is in J-Town right there taking over main street i do not have my booth yet but for the last i don't know five years i've been in 333 331 along at the end right across right down from the um j town fire station and on the end closest to uh first baptist j town so come by um check out our booth uh, we'll be there all three days uh, clarence will be there uh, with his sci-fi thriller and if he leaves, we'll leave books there so you can get it, so you don't miss it. Um, I'm super excited. Congratulations again, Clarence, right. for all that uh, you're working on. And book two, The Broken Night, is on the way, too. So we got to get the first book <laughs> so you can be ready for book two. Thank you again. Um, Draconian, with a K, saga.com is his website. And uh, I will, let me go back and see if I can get... Let me unpin this post. Let's see if I can get back and I'll pin his post. But thank you so much, everybody, for joining us this evening. If you have any questions, go to bkroystonpublishing.com and um, Clarence Johnson, Draconian, D R A K O N I A N saga. Dragon of Darkness is his sci fi thriller brought to you by Royal Media and Publishing. Woo! Super excited. My husband goes, why do you do that? I said, because I'm excited. Yay! <laughs> and that's just me. But thank you so much for being with us this evening, taking the time out. Please share the video. Thank you for all those. We're even going to be on the replay. We're going to see it later saying, science fiction. Julia Royston publishes science fiction. Sure do. <laughs> so reach out to me. Thank you so much, Clarence. You be blessed. And have a great yeah. weekend. Y'all, the rest of the week, not weekend yet. I'm ready for Friday already. <laughs> Had too much going on in Texas. <sighs> Have a great week, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>